Over the course of the rest of this topic, we're now going to be looking at solving quadratic equations. And one of the key tools in our arsenal in solving quadratic equations is being able to factorise them. If you cannot factorise, you're going to really struggle with solving quadratic equations. So I encourage you to really just keep, keep practising at factorisation. It needs to become a process in terms of preparation for next year. Um, for those of you wanting to go on and study maths methods, um, it really needs to be a process that you can do pretty much without thinking, factorization of quadratics. Okay, so it really is one of those areas of this course that you really need to practice and practice and practice and get better and better and better at it, and most importantly, more efficient at it. Um, so that's gonna be really important. We're also gonna have a look at options for solving quadratic equations if the quadratic doesn't factorise, which sometimes it doesn't. So we're going to be adding in two new techniques later on in this topic as well. So we're looking at solving quadratics, which might involve factorisation and something called the null factor law that we'll review in the next video, or it might involve two much more complex processes um, that we need if our quadratic doesn't factorise. But again, what I want you to make sure is that you don't bypass the simplest possible solution method. And so I want to focus on that in isolation today. If the quadratic has only one term involving x, if x is only sitting in one place in the equation, you should be able to give the equation to e7 to solve it because they should be able to solve it simply by doing the same thing to both sides of the equation until they get x on its own. Once again, this is a typical example where I see students expand out brackets and create a much more complicated equation when actually not expanding the bracket would have enabled them to solve the equation much more efficiently. Okay, So for example, in this first question, uh, part A, we have a quadratic equation, an equation in which the highest power of x is 2, but we don't need any complicated methods because we can simply isolate x by doing the same thing to both sides. We have x squared is equal to nine, and so we take the square root of both sides in order to solve the equation. Now, what we need to be careful of, you'll remember, is when we take the square root here, there are two possible answers for x. x could be the positive square root of nine, but it could also be the negative square root of nine. And so x could be positive or negative three. And again, remember what you're doing when you're solving an equation is you're finding um, the values, value or values that will make the equation true. And in this case, when x is positive 3, positive 3 all squared is 9. And when x is negative 3, negative 3 all squared is also 9. And so we have two possible solutions. So you must remember when you take that square root, you're going to get positive or negative square root. Okay, in this one, again, we've just got x in one place in the equation. Let's focus on getting it on its own. So this equation, if we think about how it's been built up on the left-hand side, started with x, you've squared it, you've then added 5. So the first thing we want to undo is the adding 5. So we want to subtract 5 from both sides of the equation, which will leave us with x squared on the left and 8 on the right. And then, so we've dealt with that. Now we want to do the opposite of squaring x, which is to square root x. And when we square root, we're going to get positive or negative square root of 8. And we want to make sure that our thirds are in simplest form. So that is positive or negative 2 root 2. And that's because 8 is 4 times 2, root 4 times root 2, so 2 root 2. So x could be plus or minus 2 root 2. Okay, let's think about the next one. So again, there's only one x here. We shouldn't need any fancy complicated methods here. We should just be able to do the same thing to both sides until we get x on its own. So uh, let's take away 31. So we'll be left with negative 2x squared on the left-hand side when we subtract 31. And we can have 12 minus 31, uh, which is minus 19, I think. Am I right there? 19 plus 12, yep. Um, okay, and so then we're gonna divide both sides by negative two. So x squared will now be positive 19 on two. And so x, will be the positive or negative square root of 19 on 2. Now you might choose to rationalise that denominator because remember that's plus minus root 19 over plus minus root 2. Sorry, we don't need to write plus minus twice. The whole fraction is positive or negative. Um, and so we can multiply top and bottom by root 2. And so therefore we would get plus minus root 38 over 2. Okay, It's the same thing, either, either plus minus root 19 over 2 
or plus minus root 38, all divided by 2. Okay, part D. Now this is where I know that temptation to expand out those brackets is there, but expanding out the brackets won't help you because it will actually make a more complicated equation. You'll end up with a quadratic equation where you've got more than one term involving x and you'll need a more complicated solution process. We just have x in one place in the equation here. Let's just focus on doing the same thing to both sides until we can isolate x. So again, thinking about how the left-hand side of that equation has been constructed. It starts with x, the first thing that's happening to x is you're subtracting 4 from it, and then that's all being squared. So the first thing we need to do in terms of solving and isolating x, getting back to x on its own, is to square root both sides. Now remember, when we square root, positive or negative, square root of 2 is now equal to x minus 4. Okay, so we've dealt with that, and then we're going to need to add 4 to both sides to get x on its own. And we tend to, I'm just going to write, um, so whilst, you know, it might be um, tempting and, and happy to write that, plus minus root 2 plus 4, and that's perfectly correct, there's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes it can become a bit ambiguous. When you write things after a square root, it can, be, it become, can become a bit ambiguous of, oh, is that plus 4 under the square root or isn't it? So actually, conventionally, we tend to write it in the front. So we would add the 4 first, so we get positive 4, which is just 4 plus minus square root of 2. Just avoids that ambiguity when you write something after the square root as to whether it is or isn't underneath the square root. So 4 plus or minus root 2. So there's two solutions there. 4 plus the square root of root 2 and 4 minus the square root of root 2. Root 2 is about 1.4 so that means we get 4 plus about 1.4 so 5.4 and 4 minus about 1.4 so something about 3.6. Okay but we want exact solutions, so we write them as 4 plus or minus root 2. You don't need to write them out as two separate solutions. We can all read that as two separate solutions, 4 plus root 2 or 4 minus root 2. Okay, E, again, the temptation to expand out the brackets is strong, but don't do it because it's a simple, really simple quadratic equation that you can solve by rearrangement. Just do the same thing to both sides until you get x on its own. So the first thing we need to do, which is the last thing that happens on the left-hand side of the equation, is add 9 to both sides of the equation and then we're going to take the square root bearing in mind that we'll get plus or minus root 9 now we can simplify that before we move on root 9 is 3 so we've got positive or negative 3 okay then we can take away 5 so we've got negative 5 plus or minus 3 which means we've got negative 5 plus 3 which is negative 2 or negative 5 minus 3, which is negative 8. So we've got two solutions that are equal to 2x, and then dividing by 2, we're going to get negative 1 or negative 4. You might choose to wait until the end till you write out the separate solutions. Um, so you might, you know, get for, go from here and say, okay, so x is negative 5 plus or minus 3 all over 2, and then work out what that means. So negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2 over 2, it's negative 1. Negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8 over 2, which is negative 4. Okay. But you do need to simplify them. Negative 5 plus 3, you can work that out. If it was negative 5 plus root 3, you can't work that out. You leave it as negative 5 plus root 3. But where they will collect together, you do need to collect them together. Okay, final example here. Again, we don't want to expand. It doesn't help us. It makes it harder. We've just got 1x here. Let's do the same thing to both sides until we get, it on it, get the x on its own. So we're going to have 2 times x minus 1 all squared. Subtracting 8 is negative 8. Dividing by 2 next. x minus 1 all squared is negative 8 divided by 2, so negative 4. Square root both sides. Negative 1, uh, x minus 1, sorry, is plus or minus negative root 4. Okay, we've got a problem here because you can't take the square root of a negative value. There's no way to square something and get a negative number because a negative number squared would be positive 4 and positive 2 all squared would also be positive 4. And so that's what tells us that the square root of positive 4 could be plus or minus 2. But it's impossible to take the square root of negative 4. You can't ever multiply something by itself and get a negative number. So this quadratic equation has no solutions. So there's a number of things we're going to see differently here. When we solve linear equations, they always have solutions. There will always be 
one solution to every single linear equation. Might be ugly numbers, but there'll always be a solution. When you have a quadratic equation, it's possible to get two solutions, like what we saw here, like what we saw here, like what we see here, like what we see here, and like what we see here. It's actually also possible to get one solution, okay? And we would get that, um, uh, when would we get that? We would get that if I gave you the equation x plus 3 all squared equals um, 0, for example. So you would take the square root of both sides, plus minus root 0 is still 0. Positive 0 and negative 0 are still 0. So you get x plus 3 equals 0, and so you get x equals negative 3. So it would be possible to get one solution. It's possible to get two solutions, but it's also possible for there to be no solution to a quadratic equation. And next semester when we look in more detail at the graphs of quadratics and we bring that together with our um, quadratic equation solving, we'll see why that happens. And we would find, we'll find ourselves um, less often in a position of trying to solve an equation that doesn't have solutions because we'll identify before we get to that point, oh, there's no point in solving that, it doesn't have solutions. Um, but yeah, there's a lot more variety of what can happen with our quadratics. But the key message today is if the equation just has x in one place, do not expand out the brackets and make it more complicated. Simply solve it by doing the same thing to both sides until you get x on its own. And the key thing is in that process somewhere you're going to be taking a square root, make sure that you get plus or minus square root when you take the square root. Today's work is a worksheet um, which you should be able to download and um, print. Please do the work in your exercise book rather than on the sheet.